Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest on the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Sabina Batia on the line, and she's Chief Customer Officer at PayActive, Inc. Uh, Sabina has actually been with PayActive since they had less than 100 clients, and now they've had phenomenal growth. I mean, they have thousands. Uh, so Sabina is going to take us through that journey of growth and really how they're helping their clients succeed. So first off, Sabina, just want to say uh, welcome to the show. Adam, thank you so much for having me. All right. I should also say, so Sabina is a return guest. So this would be our, our second time working with each other. So I feel like got an, an old friend back here on the show and uh, excited to, to get into the content. So um, first off, for, for those that maybe didn't catch our first episode, I'll start with our Mission Matters Minute. So Sabina, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts, as you know. Um, Sabina, what mission matters to you? Um, Adam, nothing has changed since I joined PayActive. Uh, most recently, a survey that was published by Career Builder mm -hmm. found that 78% of Americans today live mm -hmm. paycheck to paycheck. Now, this includes 9% of those who earn a six-figure income. Mm. Startling, right? Now, yeah. there is a massive opportunity today to help these millions of working Americans mm -hmm. who are struggling to support their families, their extended families, and most importantly, just themselves. Their livelihood is my life's work, and that is my mission, Adam. Uh, I love bringing mission-based uh, executives and, uh, and entrepreneurs really on the show to share why they do what they do, like what wakes them up in the morning, what gets them going to get out there and to, to fight the fight to help their clients and really make a difference. So thank you for sharing the mission. So Sabina, I mean, you've been there since the early days. So like, like any good story, I kind of like to say, let's start from the beginning. So like, how did all this come about? Sure, Adam. Um, thank you to our uh, founder and CEO, Dr. Safan Shah. He invented Earn Wage Access, mm -hmm. also known as EWA, and launched PayActive over a decade ago yeah. to improve the financial stability, that same mission that I talked mm -hmm. about a few seconds back. So really improving the financial stability mm -hmm. and livelihood of the paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck worker. Mm -hmm. And we consider that paycheck-to-paycheck -paycheck worker the underserved. So mm -hmm. we created PayActive to serve them. Today, uh, we are very fortunate to support 1,500-plus businesses. Wow. We, <laughs> we have them fully engaged um, to help their employee base. Mm -hmm. Our all-in-one livelihood platform, and you know, we'll get into more mm -hmm. details on that. But our platform, called the Livelihood Platform, yeah. has a very holistic approach, and the goal there is to make sure that employees are able to avoid a lot of those unnecessary predatory fees, like paid mm -hmm. fees, overdraft fees, late fees, and. Till today, we have saved more than four hundred million by a dollar. Wait, say that again. How much? <laughs> yes, we have. So our holistic approach to improving that financial wellness, yeah, has helped employees save more than four hundred million. Wow, that's a hold on. That's a big deal. That might that might be the headline for this article. More than four hundred <laughs> million saved. I mean, that's a, that's an amazing stat. It is, and see, that is why mission mm -hmm. matters, right? Uh, uh, so uh, hopefully that was helpful. And so the, the big thing here, though, is that like that money went somewhere, like like the employees are benefiting from that. They're not, you know, it's just not a predatory fee or something that's just coming out of their check or something that, you know, they're not getting value from. And that that fee also goes it goes into the marketplace. It helps our economy. They're buying things. They're buying food. They're buying, you know, paying rent, doing other things. So um, I think it's just such a, a great mission overall. And I don't want to assume that all of the employers watching are or even the employees kind of understand this situation overall. So maybe 
give us a little bit of from your vantage point of what it what that you know paycheck to paycheck kind of workforce looks like and why that's so important to kind of to serve this population because obviously they're, they're underserved sure sure absolutely so uh, you know adam i whenever i have a conversation yeah. with businesses today and you know outside parties I tell them, let's just stop talking about the pandemic. It's getting old. <laughs> That's all that people talk about. That's all the reason that people have for not doing X, Y, Z. Yeah. But unfortunately, Adam, we are stuck. The pandemic has created a big problem for mm. us. And it's actually escalated an issue that we've been trying to solve for the longest time. Right. Yeah. Today, um, the unemployment rate in October was 4.6%. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right? And there seems to be no hope. Yeah. And tell me, what do you mean there seems to be no hope? It's yeah. actually good news. Adam, it's not good news. Mm -hmm. And the reason being, I've always talked to employers saying, you know, the value proposition of pay active is to help mm -hmm. you in retention and turnover. Yeah. They are interrupting me today. And saying, Sabina, we can't even hire people. Wow. It's so difficult to hire. So recruitment has become a big issue. Mm -hmm. Organizations and industries across the board are struggling mm -hmm. to fill vacant roles. Now, think about last year, all the businesses that suffered, yeah. they could not make up their revenue. They've lost a lot. Mm -hmm. So right now, it seems to be a huge opportunity to claw back mm -hmm. on some much needed revenue. But no, you also have the great resignation, right? Mm -hmm. So I can't find anyone to fill a role. In addition to that, people are saying, I don't want to be in front of clients. Mm -hmm. I don't want a low paying job. How many people would be willing to work in the healthcare sector, sector and the senior living sector today? Yeah. It's tough, right? Because they think about the risk. For we sure. have retail companies, we have logistic companies. They're all having the same mm -hmm. struggle, right? And so let me go back mm -hmm. to what Career Builder survey showed us. 78% of Americans currently are living paycheck to paycheck. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. So you come into work, you punch in, punch out, mm -hmm. but you have to wait to get paid two weeks, sometimes three weeks when you start a new job. Mm -hmm. That liquidity is what creates the risk of paying all those predatory fees. Yeah. That lack of liquidity is what makes it very expensive to be poor. Mm -hmm. And that is the audience we are here to serve. Mm. And so one of the things that I like about um, Pay Active, and maybe it's a, it's a good time, let's go further into the platform, is that it's, is that it's really one, it's a benefit that the employers can offer to really Im to improve the quality of the lives of their employees. Like it's, a, it's an awesome benefit. So maybe let's start with, um, with giving us just an overview of the, the platform overall. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, it's time for businesses yeah. to relook the benefits that they're providing to the lower wage worker, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the hourly worker. And uh, one benefit that is helping across the board, and it costs the employer nothing, zero, yeah. zilch, nada, is pay actives. So um, those that are sometimes, uh, you know, like, oh, well, what is this going to cost me? You're going into your health care benefit. You're going to something else. And it's always going up. That's for sure. With that inflation rate, let's not even get into that one, uh, Sabina. But um, this one costs nothing. Yeah, absolutely. It costs them nothing. Mm. It's called on-demand earned wage access. Mm. They're becoming increasingly important to solve that same problem that I mentioned to you a few minutes yeah. ago right? That liquidity crunch, 79% mm -hmm. of Americans living paycheck to mm -hmm. paycheck. And we provide that to 1500 plus businesses. Uh, mm -hmm. The EWA services provide flexible payment models so that employees can access pay they've mm -hmm. earned, but not yet collected by receiving yeah. prepayments in advance of their regular paycheck, typically for a very small fee. Mm -hmm. uh, now, why is it important? 
we ran a survey and this is what's going to give it relevance. So mm. any employer who did not know this, recognize these numbers. Mm -hmm. 95% of hourly workers are interested in working for an employer who offers EWA. Wow. 89% of hourly workers mm -hmm. are willing to work longer for an employer that offers EWA. 79% mm -hmm. so will be willing to switch to an employer that offers EWA. A significant. Why do they not offer EWA? Mm -hmm. You know, so those are the facts. Those are the facts. And that is the value proposition. So, I, I mean, I have to I have to piggyback on your question then. Why do you think it's maybe employers don't know it exists? Do you think like, like I'm just trying to figure out like why? Why why have you found? I, I know it's different for every employer, but why, what are some of the reasons you found maybe? Well, Adam, you said wow a few times when I uh, gave you those stats, yeah. right? It's the same thing. Sometimes it's just unawareness of mm. how hard it is for the lower wage worker. I'll tell Got you, it. I'll give you one story. Um, one of our clients based in Colorado, the CHRO was mm -hmm. working really late in the office. She left work at around quarter to eight or so. It was pitch dark. Mm -hmm. She walks in the parking lot. It's like an open air par parking lot. And she sees someone sleeping in a car, like mm. an old car, like broken down car. And at first, you know, I would too, you would too. She, she kind of got nervous, like, what's going on here? Yeah. But then uh, something made her look. Mm. And she saw that it was actually one of her employees. Oh, wow. In the car. She realized that this person probably just didn't have a home. Oh. Right. So by providing access to the wages that they've already earned, instead mm -hmm. of making them wait to get paid, you know, they can take care of their housing expenses. Yeah. You know, basic expenses like travel, food, mm -hmm. groceries. Right. So the HR leaders, organizations, the C-level suites, the mm -hmm. managers, supervisors, everybody is empowered to make that difference, to yeah. show that impact that tomorrow, this employee will not be sleeping in their car because mm -hmm. we saved them from an eviction. You wow. know, so, so things like that, those things matter, Adam, they mm -hmm. matter. And one of the, um, I guess we, we have to explore the other side of this as well. So what happens when, and I think the other part of the education piece um, is, okay, so that particular person maybe didn't have access to any capital. Then there's the maybe employees that are a little bit more savvy or they have, they go to uh, another capital source like, um, you know, a payday place or something else where there might be some, some lending practices that make it to where, um, let's just say it's, it's definitely not, not an even fit um, or a fair balance there. Tell me a little bit more about the, the predatory side of what happens to some employees when, when maybe they don't have access to, the, to that capital. Sure, sure. So you don't have access to liquidity. So once again, let's go back to the pandemic. I'm sorry, yeah. I keep telling people not to talk about the pandemic, but I can't avoid talking about the For pandemic. For sure. <laughs> right? So during the pandemic, there were two kinds of vaccines given, Adam. Hmm. One was your stimulus checks, mm -hmm. right? To take care of the financial stress. And yeah. the other vaccine was for the virus itself. Mm -hmm. Right. So financial stress actually became that invisible virus. Mm. Right. So now when you don't have liquidity and you don't have funds mm -hmm. coming with between paychecks, what happens? Remember, yeah. your bills don't follow the schedule of your mm -hmm. payroll. Right. I have bills that fall on the 8th, on the 17th, on the, on yeah. the 9th, you know, all over the place. So when people don't have that liquidity, they pay late fees, mm -hmm. they pay disconnect fees, they mm -hmm. pay rec uh, reconnect fees, they yeah. pay administration fees, all those fees. But remember, when those fees go to their checking account and there's no mm -hmm. money there, right? What happens? I pay overdraft fees. Oh, so it's fee on fee on fee. Yes. And we've done tons of surveys. Yeah. Right? 
users today could be paying up to four, five overdraft fees in a month. Wow. You know the cost of overdraft fees. You Which is significant after- if it's also for somebody that's, a, you know, an hourly employee. Let's say they're making, you know, I don't know, $10 an hour, whatever, um, and, and uh, just a random number. And let's say the overdraft fee is now, you know, $40 or $39.99 or whatever. You know, that's you know, exactly. four, four hours of labor. So a half a day of work goes to nothing. Doesn't exactly. go to food, doesn't go to paying down a bill, doesn't even doesn't even go to interest in this case or anything. It just goes to a late fee. Nothing. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. And so it's tough, right? Mm-hmm. It's tough. The liquidity crunch has created a big problem. So, you know, we are here to serve uh, those employees that are struggling financially and worse mm-hmm. because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but, you know, we are not solving just a short-term liquidity problem. Yeah. Right? We want to make sure, see, the whole definition of essential worker change, right, during mm. the pandemic. The way I look at essential worker is if you have to leave your home to earn mm-hmm. a living, you are an essential worker. Absolutely. <laughs> right? You don't have to just be in healthcare or yeah. see living. You could be working at a grocery store. Yep. You could be a porter. You could be anyone. If you're an hourly worker and you have to step out of the house, yep. you are an essential worker. So taking care of that short-term liquidity, mm-hmm. we have that. But I would love to uh, talk to you a little bit about what our livelihood platform is actually about, because mm-hmm. it solves the long-term problem of our people. Yeah. And, uh, and I love the, I love your definition, by the way, of essential worker. And, and, and we're all learning this, the economy and the world are learning this based off the fact that um, our supply chain shortages right now, right? You can't get a package, you can't get import, you can't get, so the drivers, all the, you know, hourly workers in between this entire supply chain that weren't maybe always deemed essential. Now it's like, Hey, it's essential. Everything stops if you have to leave your house and somebody has to, and you have to complete a task to keep everything going, to keep this economy going and to keep goods moving. So lo- love the concept and, um, and I completely agree with you. So yes, um, by the way, let's definitely get into the platform. So tell us more about that. Sure. So there are three main themes within the livelihood platform, mm-hmm. right? Livelihood, right? Uh, a worker's livelihood is our life's work. Yeah. But what does the livelihood platform do? So the three themes are live, mm-hmm. right? Live helps workers just live the life they earned. You give them timely access to yeah. whatever they've earned and avoid all those unnecessary overdraft fees, late fees, disconnect fees, reconnect fees. So that that's where you have the on-demand earn wage access. Mm-hmm. So now they are living, getting by, taking care of business. Mm-hmm. Then you have the theme of grow. Mm-hmm. Now, grow helps employees reach their short-term and long-term livelihood growth. Mm -hmm. Businesses keep telling us, listen, we want to provide a financial wellness tool, not just a liquidity tool. We want more because we want our people to be happy long run. So what we've done is we've created a goal-based savings platform. Mm -hmm. We have a discount marketplace. There are so many ways a user can manage their finances Mm -hmm. once they are empowered after taking care of their basic needs. <laughs> so now comes the third thing, and employers just love this. It's called connect. Mm. So I'll tell you that at least in the Bay Area, I'm, I'm based r- uh, right here at headquarters in San Jose. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a, an article by Mercury News uh, uh, a few months back, mm-hmm. which stated that 70% of those Bay Area employees who can mm. work, home, work at home have no desire to come to work. <laughs> they don't want to come to work. Yeah. Right? So it's become very competitive, but for employers, it's becoming more and more difficult to mm-hmm. stay connected with their people. 
right? Mm -hmm. Hourly workers is one thing, right? They're out there, they're working. How do I connect with them? That's always been a challenge. For but sure. It's become a challenge across the board. So on our platform, we have this service called Connect. Mm. And with Connect, our goal is to facilitate this collaboration and mm -hmm. sense of community among essential workforce and to connect the employer to the non-desk employees. Yeah. Right. So the platform in itself serves the people and serves the business, right? You have to serve the people first, mm -hmm. right? So that is really what the platform is about. And I, I think the best part about it is it's really well-rounded. So meaning you have the liquidity aspect, which obviously that's going to solve the, the immediate problem, right? Like you don't want someone to, you want somebody to have access to that liquidity so that they can, you know, eat, they can pay their bills, things like that, not be, not fall into that cycle of uh, lending, predatory lending or late fees or whatever it is. Like you don't want them falling into that cycle. But then when, after you've helped with the, the liquidity and some of the immediate need, um, you know, I, in a perfect, you know, ideally the employee wants to, you know, take the next step and say, okay, now how do I start building some wealth? Exactly. How do I start building my nest egg and exactly. growing that? And a lot of, for a lot of people, that's the education piece. Maybe they didn't get that, or maybe they have it, but they have some concepts that don't necessarily mesh well with what's going to be best for their situation. So you have that piece, then you're solving the other part with the connect for the, um, for the employer so that now the employer um, can connect better with the employees. But I, I just feel like between all of these, some of the central themes that seem pretty obvious to me is it, this validates just common sense why some of the numbers that you said earlier about in terms of like retention or, or wanting to be an employer that offers a service like this, or that makes just the quality of life for the employee at a company that offers these type of services just better. Yes. And Adam, think about this, right? Uh, mm -hmm. It might sound a little out there, but it is true, right? Your people are mm -hmm. helping us build this economy. They're mm -hmm. helping us grow this economy. So put them in the right situation where they can benefit from mm -hmm. this economy that they've built, right? Mm -hmm. So we tell employers that, listen, an employee value proposition is a set of financial and non-financial benefits that a business will offer them. And the business will say, I will give you recognition of time that you put in, your mm -hmm. skill set, and the experience to perform mm -hmm. a job. So it's very mm -hmm. transactional. But modern thinking now is that's not enough. Yeah. The employee value proposition moves the concept beyond a simple transaction between two parties. Mm -hmm. So now... It, now, the employee value proposition for an employer is mutually beneficial only mm -hmm. if they provide a rewarding system of support, recognition, and values that an employer has and can push to everyone in the organization. Now, as a salaried employee, employee the kind of benefits you might get is mm -hmm. not exactly what an hourly worker would get. Yeah not working anymore. That is not going to work, right? So that benefit needs to be in sync across the board, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, we at PayActive have built the platform, mm -hmm. have, uh, you know, the live, grow, connect value proposition for both the employer and employee. Mm -hmm. And we've gone way beyond that, right? Mm -hmm. Adam? And we should talk about that. What you do is important, but how you do is even more important. Yeah, de definitely well said. Um, and and I get it. And the value proposition, I mean, it just becomes obvious when you sit back and look at it. And just to recap some things we started this interview with, um, 400 million safe for employees. I mean, that number alone, $400 million is a huge number, right? Understanding that this money is used um, for essential items many times if you're living paycheck to paycheck, like it's essential. So that money is getting in hands of people that need it and people that have earned it. This isn't charity, it's their money, right? So, so I mean, they're working for this it's there it's you're just providing liquidity here um so that makes sense then and then on the employer side the retention all the other stats you gave i mean it just seems like it's just creating a lot of win-win scenarios yes it is um there's one other special thing i, mm. I treat it as special and that is payout's mission is 
not only to achieve this goal mm. of helping those that are in need because of the financial stress and all, yeah. but how we're doing it is very important. You might or might not have heard of B Corps. Have you heard about it, Adam? I have not, no. Mm. Okay, let me tell you about it. So um, in 2015, actually, we became mm -hmm. a certified B Corp. Mm. Think about a B Corp organization that, that wants to work towards a trifecta impact. What is the trifecta mm. impact? It is very important to help employees. It is very important to help communities. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to make a positive impact on environment. Mm. So for us, purpose and profit are equally important. We yeah. need to balance that out. And that's what a B Corp is. Mm. So um, and the, that's the entity, right? The physical structure, correct? Just to be clear. Yes. Ah, got it. And so, okay, now learn something new every day doing this, Sabina. I know I knew a C Corp, but now I have next, now I have on my, my docket the B Corp. So uh, I'm in providing, providing value everywhere here, Sabina. Um, and why, so why did PayActive choose to go that route? I'm just curious, like, because that's, that's a significant step in terms of entity, um, in terms of uh, entity selection. We want to do the right thing. Yeah. We want to do it right. Um, you know, when it comes to our platform, it mm -hmm. comes to our pricing model, it comes to the value proposition that, uh, you know, we are going to give to businesses to people. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we make a measurable impact mm -hmm. on all organizations, on all employees and to communities and the environment. And we thought that why not formalize it? Mm -hmm. So we became a certified B Corp. So, you know, it's, it's very important to us that we do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So Sabina, this has been great. I mean, it's always awesome having you on the show. I, so, but I do have to ask, so, so what's next? I mean, what's next for, for you, for pay active? Like, what do you see happening in the, in the industry? What's next? It's simple, right? Um, I talked to you a little bit about our mission. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are very focused in 2020, there were 73.3 million hourly wage workers in the wow. U.S. And that represents 51% of the total workforce. Mm -hmm. That's where our work is. We have a lot yeah. of work to do to take care of them. And uh, we are very fortunate that businesses across the country and globally are very, mm -hmm. very supportive of our mission. Mm -hmm. That's what's next. We're going to continue to grow on our platform. We're going to yeah. continue to propagate the value proposition we give and do it the right way. I hope that is helpful. So if somebody's watching this right now, Sabina, um, so final question, two-part question. Uh, if somebody's watching this and they're, you know, they're either in an HR department or they're the employer themselves and they want to learn more. So first, first question is, um, what types of uh, companies typically get the most value out of work with PayActive? So meaning is it size of company, industry or otherwise, or are you industry agnostic? Um, and, and, and how do those employers follow up and learn more? So, you know, other particular businesses, mm -hmm. you know, we don't necessarily uh, look at businesses, we look at people, right? Mm. If you are a business that has hourly workers, it doesn't matter which industry you are, yeah. how big you are, how small you are, we are here to serve you. Our smallest mm -hmm. customer has one employee, uh. right? <laughs> and our largest customer has hundreds and thousands of employees. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. We are here to serve your people. Mm -hmm. So we will be here for you. And, you know, you can always learn more about us on our website, uh, payactive.com. And um, there's actually a great film we made um, mm. right during the pandemic, actually just before the pandemic. It's called It's About Time. Mm. It's about time. It's about time we did something, but also we actually convert time mm. into financial wellness for employees. So there's a movie, check it out. Um, it's about time. The film.com is the website. Uh, I think you'll learn a lot more about our mission more than at least what I've shared today. 
Oh, well, I, I think we've learned a lot based off of what you shared. So, so I won't sell that short, but I will say that we will definitely put the links to, um, to the websites and the show notes so that our, our viewers and listeners can just go check out the movie. They can go check out, of course, Pay Active's main site and learn more. Um, so for Sabina, again, awesome having you on the show today. And uh, to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. If you're a new time uh, visitor or a listener or a viewer, um, and uh, you don't know what to expect, just want you to know we bring on mission-based entrepreneurs, executives, and experts on, and we have them share their mission, um, their background, like why they do what they do, why it's important, how they're, how they're out there making a difference day in and day out. So definitely hit that subscribe button, and uh, we hope to see you back here um, for the next next episode. And Sabina, again, really, it has been a pleasure. Until the next time, look forward to our next interview. Thank you so much, Adam. Thank you so much for having me.